All right, friends, today I'm going to be talking about common health mistakes when we're talking about nutrition. So those things that are sneaking into our diet that we might think are healthy, but aren't really healthy. And before we get started, I just want to encourage you that if you have been thinking in your mind, maybe you need some extra support or help in your health journey, and you've been hesitant, I encourage you to reach out. There's going to be a link down below where you can set up a free call with me so we can really discuss your goals, your struggles, and what is that missing piece? How do we start to develop consistency, whether that's in your nutrition or your fitness, and really find that support and that accountability that you need to start making those changes that you have been thinking about for probably years for. I would love to help you do that. I offer online personal training and health coaching, and I have my course, Healthy Inside and Out. So let's figure out what the right fit for you is and figure out that next step. So make sure you guys check the link down below. I have lots of great information there. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mama four and military wife, and I'm passionate about helping women get healthy from the inside out so they can feel better and live their best life. Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight and get in shape? If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably, then you're in the right place. I combine my expertise from my doctorate in physical therapy to my experience as a health coach, personal trainer, and yoga teacher to bring you actionable steps for a healthy lifestyle. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. So I'm excited to talk about this topic today. And first, I'm going to tell you a little story about me. So this was a couple years ago. And if you don't know, I started having some autoimmune issues a few years ago. And I cut out dairy and gluten among doing a few other things so that I didn't get a full-blown autoimmune disorder, which I was able to help myself and not have to go on any drugs. I don't even go back to the rheumatologist or have any of the symptoms that I was having. But so I go out to eat. It is a little harder to be gluten and dairy free when you go out to eat. And my husband and I went to Noodles and Company. And we had gone here a few times because you can get noodles that aren't gluten. There are options to get without dairy. So I got a bowl that I could have. And I had had this quite a few times. And one time I just decided to look up the nutritional information on it. And I was shocked. And I should have known better. So in this bowl, it had 44 grams of sugar. Yes. Something that was more a savory thing, not even sweet, had 44 grams of sugar. It had 1,000 calories and 2,000 milligrams of sodium. I wasn't even worried about that as much as like, holy moly, I just have been eating how much sugar and had absolutely no idea. And sugar is just really snuck into so many things and it can be very inflammatory for our body. And I just believe God has made us to eat real food. And just the way our country has gone really since the industrial revolution, food has become so much more processed, packaged. The amount of sugar consumption has gone up. So I'm going to go through a list of 10 different foods that maybe you think you know, are healthy and they're not. So the first one is sweetened yogurt. And this also counts for froyo or frozen yogurt. But those are packed with sugar. One of my clients I recently worked with she was having yogurt and she did put nuts and other things in it, but it was sweetened. And it really has a lot of sugar if you're looking on the package. So what we did for her was we switched to a Greek yogurt that was unsweetened. And she put a lot of fruit on, like, add those berries. So every spoonful, you are having berries or something sweet with it. And I think she added some nuts and it worked perfect. She was able to eat that and it still tasted good for her. Number two is veggie straws. So they are not veggies. My dad, my kids will try to argue differently, but veggie straws do not count as vegetables. And sometimes they actually have a higher glycemic index because in veg veggie straws, they put cornstarch and some of the other things actually make it a little bit higher glycemic than a regular potato chip. Number three is a sweetened electrolyte drink or juices. So we really don't want to consume our calories through a liquid that is just high in sugar and doesn't have any protein, fat, or anything else, any other nutrients in there. So the only people that potentially might need these are like super athletes who are working really hard. 
So unless you are exercising for hours, you don't need those extra carbs in that sweetened electrolyte drink or juices. Number four is granola bars and can put a lot of protein bars in this category too. So if you look at the label and it's having, you know, nine, 12 grams of sugar, it's pretty much the size of a small cookie. And so think about what you're eating. So we're thinking we're eating something healthy because it's a granola bar or a protein bar. But if it's packed with sugar, it's not really a healthy snack. Number five is I'm going to call these like claims. So if a box says whole grains, gluten-free, organic, keto, high fiber is probably not necessarily healthy. You have to look at the labels and really see if it is because a lot of these processed foods that they're trying to label as organic, it can have a ton of sugar. It's not really healthy. They've just used organic ingredients that doesn't make it healthy. Same thing, just because it's keto, it doesn't mean it's healthy. We want to incorporate more whole foods and real foods. So especially when it comes to breads, crackers, Cheerios, different things like this, whole grain does not mean it's healthy. Number six is sweetened milk alternatives. So things like soy milk, um, oat milk, almond milk, any of those that they then add sugar to are not great either because, again, we're getting that extra dose of sugar that we really don't need. So if you're buying these milk alternatives, make sure you're buying the unsweetened version. Number seven is a lot of trail mix. And typically because when we're buying a trail mix where it comes put together, the dried fruit is typically typically going to have oils, that are high in omega-6, so those can be very inflammatory, and also sugar. And sometimes even in the nuts that they roast, they're going to add those omega-6 oils that are inflammatory and other things to it. So we really want to avoid those. So if you guys haven't heard me talk before about omega-3s and omega-6s, omega-3s in our diet that come from nuts and seeds when they haven't been processed like that, but also our main source of four types of omega-3s can only come from aquatic sources. So it can only come from algae or fish. And those omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So they're going to ramp down the inflammation in our body. And these other things like sugar and soybean oil, corn oil, ramp up the inflammation in our body. So we want to make sure that we're not getting a lot of these inflammatory omega-6s but that we are getting a lot of omega-3s by eating fish. And most of us need to supplement with a high quality fish oil because 97% of us are deficient in omega-3. So that means we don't have enough properties in our body that are anti-inflammatory. If you guys want more information about this, there's gonna be a link down below. And I really encourage you to get your levels tested. There's a kit where you can get a test kit You can start supplementing for four months and test again and make sure your levels of omega-3s are good. So make sure you have enough anti-inflammatory properties in your body. And in this balance oil that I use, it also has polyphenols. So those are powerful compounds that help bring down inflammation even further and helps to amplify the way that omega-3 is working. So it's a special oil. So check the link down below. You guys can always message me on Instagram or Facebook if you guys have more questions about that. All right, number eight, and this again goes with that omega-6 idea, is a lot of salad dressings. So most salad dressings are made from soybean oil, which are super high in omega-6s. So it can be very inflammatory. So at best, if you can make a salad dressing with olive oil, And even apple cider vinegar can be great for blood sugar and gut health, like make your own salad dressing. I have seen some at the store that are made with olive oil. So read those labels and make sure you're not eating something healthy like a salad and then loading up omega-6 oils on it. The next one is sauces. And I'm going to call it barbecue sauce here because a lot of barbecue sauce has so much sugar. If you guys haven't, and you guys have barbecue sauce at your home, go look at the label right now and see how much sugar it is and the serving size. I think the serving size is usually one or two tablespoons and a lot of barbecue sauces have like 12 grams of sugar, sometimes even a little bit more. So you really wanna be careful. And this is where, with the meal that I was talking about at Noodles and Company, it was the sauce that they had on it. I mean, just absolutely loaded with sugar. 
So any type of those other sauces in oriental meals, um, barbecue, like ketchup has lots of sugar and it depends how much you eat of it, how much you're getting. So really be careful with all those sort of toppings and extras. And the last one I want to mention here is like the 100 calorie pack. So just because something is 100 calories does not make it healthy. Like that is perfect. We're watching our portion sizes. But what is in here? Typically, it's going to be high carb, high sugar. It's not going to help our blood sugar. It's not going to help us feel better. So there might be some item that is healthy in that, but look at it, see what's in it. Don't let that packaging sway your perception of something's healthy. All right, guys. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope it sparked a few things that maybe you need to go look out in your pantry. Maybe you need to go get rid of it. And nobody likes to throw away food, but if you don't need it, throw it away if you can, because really no one in our house should be eating some of these. And also, even though I say that, keep in mind, our health is an all or nothing. So if you still have a couple of these in your diet, that's okay. How can we start to decrease that and put more healthy stuff in it? Because we're not perfect and that's okay. Sometimes I do have um, nuts that have that oil and sugar on it. I know there's one salad I get that has it and I'm okay with that. But how can I most of the time avoid these things? So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys feel empowered and also head to my Facebook group. Healthy Beyond 40, there's going to be a link down below. And let me know what one of these foods you're going to work on sort of pushing out more, or maybe one of those you were surprised about or haven't thought about before. Share to my group so we can all encourage and inspire each other. All right, guys, keep moving. And I hope you guys have an awesome week.